book. So I have this book, the first one, Wicked Saints, which is the Owl Crate edition. So Ruthless Gods is the second one. It's supposed to be a trilogy. It hasn't been released yet. It's getting released in April, I believe, in the spring sometime of 2020. I was lucky enough to receive an advanced copy as an ebook from a website, netgalley.com. And I have to apply for um, which books you'd like to read. So I got approved to read that one as an ebook on my Samsung Fire tablet, which I use as an e reader. I that's all I use this for is to put my books on and it's it's cheap, it's available, it's Amazon tablet. Sorry, not Samsung, Amazon Fire 10. So that's what I use for my ebook. So I read it on there and yeah, it was really good. So this is a review of Ruthless Gods by Emily A. Duncan. Um, it doesn't show, it just says Uncorrected Digital Galley. Um, it doesn't show the cover, but I cannot wait to buy this book as a hardback to get the matching cover. Hopefully Owl Crate will release an edition with the red on it so that the covers will match. And yeah, so here's my thoughts about this book. Um, I'll try to keep this spoiler free. This book was, I liked it about the same as I liked Wicked Saints, maybe a little less. I found it was a lot darker. Um, Wicked Saints is a dark fantasy, there's a lot of blood magic, um, cutting, death, skulls, um, there's, it's very gothic and reminds me of um, gothic Russian literature. But I found this one was even darker. Wicked Saints, as I was reading it, I was so absorbed in the story, I didn't even notice that it was dark. If that makes any sense. And this one, I was reading it, and I was there was parts I was like, wow, that's really dark. That's really gruesome. Like, there's parts where there's a whole cave full of skulls and jawbones, and there's blood pouring out of the walls, and it's very gruesome. There's also one part of, um, of recreational drug use, um, or drug use in order to feel magic, which I didn't like. I personally, I'm against drugs and things like that are, are triggering to me. Um, it wasn't a huge scene, but it was upsetting to me because it was a likable character that was doing something so it could be controversial. So yeah, so that was in one scene where a character uses magic mushrooms. Then, so there is a lot of content warning that has to go along with this book. Um, otherwise, it's a very good story. I was kind of hoping that this would be a duology, like Six of Crows. Six of Crows and... The Shadow and Bone, um, the Grishaverse trilogy is where she pulled some of her inspiration from. But a lot, I find there's a lot of trilogies out there, but there's not a lot of good duologies. And I haven't read a du good duology since January of this year when I read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. So I was really hoping this would be a duology, but it wasn't. But that's alright. So I have one more book to look forward to in the future. So. As I said, this one was very dark. Um, we got introduced to some new gods, and new, and then it, there's questions about: Are they really gods, or are they something else? Are they like elder beings? And new gods that weren't introduced in the first one get brought up. There's some really dark scenes in a forest where the trees are bleeding, and there's this gruesome forest god that has the skull of a deer and black eyes and he takes over one of the people in the story. So it's it's very gruesome but I did enjoy the story. Um, I enjoy I enjoy Malachiash as a character. I really 
I like how she wrote him as conflicted, and I like the struggle between him as a boy and him as a monster, or monster god being, um, is very well written, and you really see the, just the different sides of him, how someone can be so innocent and also so evil, and it really shows you it's just portrayed really well. I really like his character and the inner conflict and how he relates to Nadia. And it's like Nadia, sometimes she hates him. She she sees that he's a liar, he's a user. And then sometimes she just can't help but love him and she sees the goodness in him and she sees the, the side where he's just a scared boy who needs help. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. There's some new characters introduced, like a, I forget her name, a female um, princess that's basically a vulture hunter, and she's pretty badass. Um, so yeah, it's, I find, it's hard to tell on an ebook. My e-reader doesn't tell me exactly how many pages, or if it does, I haven't figured out how to check exactly how many pages are in a book. But, um, I find that this book feels like a lot thicker than Wicked Saints, so I think it's going to be a bigger book, probably closer to 500 pages. So it'll be interesting to see once it's published and I get it a copy in hardback what size it will be, but it felt like a longer story to me. When Wicked Saints was compact, it's almost 400 pages, but it feels really easy to read and feels like a small book. But this one didn't. Um, what else can I say about this book? There's... There's just... Um, different... The More between the different magic systems. Callie is in and Trinavia. And their magic clashing. And who will... Which one will ultimately come out on top. Nadia goes with... Um, a couple of the characters from Trinavia, Seraphin and some others, and she, or no, it's Malakiash that she brings there, and she goes back to her homeland, basically back to the, the abbey, like where all the, the monks and stuff were, and she brings Trinavians there, so it's basically a me the culture's meeting, and how they're accepted or not accepted or welcomed there. Um, yeah, and I'm not really sure what else to say except that it's, there is a lot of very dark, disturbing scenes, there's a lot of gore, um, one of the characters came out as gay, um, so there was that aspect of it, um, which was hinted at, I got... I kind of got at the hint of that in the first book, but it wasn't like blatantly said and stated, and in this book it is, and it's it's followed through with. Um, so I'm not sure what else to say about this. I would rate it four stars out of five, and I would like to say a huge thank you to Emily A. Duncan for allowing me to read this on netgalley.com. I am very excited to say that I got to read it in advance, and thank you so much. And yeah, um, definitely looking forward to the third book. And like I said, definitely hoping I can get an Owl Crate edition so that it will match this one. I love the red cover. The original covers are nice with the, the white, but I find this, these books are just so bloody. The red really ties in with the blood and gore of the book. And I love the spine, the um, words on the inside. So I'm really hoping when Ruthless Gods is released um, that it will be just as beautiful and just as stunning. So yeah, that is my very simple spoiler-free review of Ruthless Gods. And a shout out to Emily A. Duncan and thank you so much for 
allowing me to read this. You should all go out and read it when it's released in 2020. And then we can wait for the third book to come out. Okay, thanks everyone, and thanks for watching. And yeah, and my favorite character is still Seraphin, and close second is Malachiash. I cannot decide which one I like better. Who's your favorite character in this whole book or book series? If you've read Ruthless Gods, um, comment down below. Tell me who your favorite characters are. And yeah, have a nice day.